California sea otters are more than just cute. A growing body of evidence shows they may play a big role in fighting the impacts of climate change. Elizabeth Cook shows us how in tonight's Project Earth Report. Early morning, a small boat takes off from Moss Landing, and our story begins. It's a beautiful story of nature getting back in balance. At the stern, community scientist and U.S. Navy vet Ron Eby. On board, marine scientists armed with binoculars and notepads. He's right next to the bank. Nearby, more community scientists, all volunteers, perched on the banks. They're set up at more than a dozen locations and ready to go. We have an area that's been assigned to us and it includes the marsh uh, to this point and then the slough. Elkhorn Slough, one of the largest estuaries in California. This area we call the wildlife viewing area. They're set to view one of the most charismatic creatures on the planet, the southern sea otter. The fur trade of the 1800s nearly wiped them out. Prior to about 1995, there really weren't that many otters in Elkhorn Slough. That all changed in the 80s when the Monterey Bay Aquarium released rescued otters into the slough. Now it's home to the greatest concentration of southern sea otters in the world. Thanks to the otters, another species, one that fights climate change, is once again thriving. It's called eelgrass. When the otters came in, the eelgrass had grown significantly. Here's why. The otters eat lots of crab. With fewer crabs to eat them, the number of sea slugs exploded. The slugs eat excess algae, crud, found on dying eelgrass, scrubbing it clean. So they're taking that brown crud off the seagrass. The seagrass can then absorb light, and then it flourishes. And that helps to tackle climate change. Lillian Carswell with U.S. Fish and Wildlife explains. Seagrass absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and it stores it in its root base, and its root base is buried in the marsh, and so that is a, a powerful form of carbon sequestration. With the carbon stuck in the mud. It doesn't get released back into the atmosphere and cause the global warming that's such a problem around the world. Back to the binoculars and scopes. One otter grooming. The volunteers on land. Oh, good. And the scientists on the boat are monitoring the otters to record their activities, social behavior, and habitat use. We're counting the otters and reporting on their behavior. So, for example, when I see an otter, I describe whether it's foraging, resting, grooming, uh, traveling or interacting. It's much more important to look now at their social dynamics, especially if we're going to translocate them. The hope, if some of the otters are moved to other estuaries or bays in the state, that they may help to restore dying eelgrass there. I'm looking forward to seeing more otter populations in the whole West Coast because they provide such a valuable role. And that may benefit us all. And one major study found seagrasses can store up to twice as much carbon as the world's forests. As for harming commercial crab fisheries, studies suggest how crabs and otters can actually coexist without harming the industry.